You hear Dr. Richard Evans, consultant in internal medicine, chronic fatigue syndrome in a young adult. Now you have 90 seconds to look at the questions. Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Evans, a consultant in internal medicine, and I'd like to share a case that highlights the complexities of diagnosing and managing chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis, or MECFS. The patient in question was a 22-year-old university student, previously healthy and active, who came to my clinic with persistent fatigue, muscle aches, and difficulty concentrating, which had progressively worsened over the previous 10 months. These symptoms had started after a bout of mononucleosis, from which she hadn't seemed to recover fully. When I met her, she was attending fewer classes, had withdrawn from her swim team, and was beginning to experience symptoms of depression. Multiple specialists had previously told her that it was likely due to exam stress or a lack of sleep, and even suggested she might be imagining the symptoms. This had understandably left her feeling frustrated and doubting herself. The first step was to rule out organic causes of fatigue, we conducted a battery of tests including thyroid function, full blood count, vitamin B12 levels, and markers for autoimmune disorders. All came back normal. However, the patient reported experiencing a distinct pattern. Any physical or mental exertion would cause a severe worsening of symptoms 12 to 24 hours later, a phenomenon known as post-exertional malaise, a key feature of MECFS. We also assessed her sleep quality, which was poor. Despite spending over nine hours in bed, she often woke feeling unrefreshed and struggled with non-restorative sleep. Her cognitive symptoms, what patients often describe as brain fog, made studying extremely difficult. Though she wasn't clinically depressed, her mood was affected, largely due to the functional limitations and disbelief from others. We used the Canadian consensus criteria for diagnosing MECFS which requires the presence of fatigue for more than six months, post-exertional malaise, unrefreshing sleep, and either cognitive impairment or orthostatic intolerance. She clearly met the criteria. Treatment of MECFS isn't straightforward. There is no definitive cure, and the approach is primarily about managing symptoms and improving function. I explained to her that pushing through fatigue could worsen her symptoms. Instead, we introduced a pacing strategy an energy management technique where activities are balanced carefully to avoid crashes. We also involved a multidisciplinary team, including a physiotherapist and a clinical psychologist trained in CBT for chronic illness. The goal wasn't to suggest her symptoms were in her head, but to provide coping tools and emotional support. I recommended gentle physical activity, not to increase stamina, but to maintain some mobility and reduce deconditioning. We avoided graded exercise therapy, as evidence suggests it may harm some MECFS patients. Over the next few months, she began to identify her limits more clearly and adjust her routine accordingly. We made accommodations with her university, allowing for flexible deadlines and reduced course load. Her fatigue didn't disappear, but she felt more in control, and her mental health stabilized. Perhaps most importantly, she felt validated and understood.